guys, Ron and Debbie. We're back for another edition of Ask Ron. Hello. <laughs> okay, our first question is from Heather Olson. I'm in a better mood than I was last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Heather is from Florida. Hey, Heather. Oh, I know Heather. I know. We do yeah. know Heather. Okay, how long do you wait to hit your tenant buyers with a letter when they are late or miss a rent payment? Do you what? send any reminder or notification that oh, since they've been Heather, late on the rent? you've been through my boot camp. You know the answer to this. Why don't you get out your manual? It's right in there for you. And how long do I wait to hit my tenants? I haven't hit one in quite a while. I felt like hitting a few of them, but not, <laughs> not in quite a while. Just kidding, Heather. Just kidding. Do not brutalize your tenants. All right, here's what do we do. Um... I have a five-day late penalty in my lease option agreement and or even in with an owner financing agreement if that's applicable. After the fifth day, we send them a notice that their rent is late. Now please add the late payment. It's a 10% late penalty after five days late. If, um, if we haven't received their rent and their late penalty within a, a few days after that, um, we're going to actually... Well, actually, let me back up. On the sixth day, we send them a three-day notice to pay or get out, pay or quit. And in that notice, we ask for the late, pe late penalty. So if that time expires now and three business days without holidays go by, and no weekends go by, and we haven't collected the money, we just simply turn it over to the attorney, and then the attorney will contact them, give them a few more days to pay. Now they have to pay the rent and the late penalty and the attorney's fees because if they don't they we don't accept any of it and if that doesn't take place then the attorney will go ahead and file eviction on them and it's kind of rare that we file eviction we have we do have one guy that's in his that we've evicted four times now and he's still in the house <laughs> because he keeps bringing all the money in and all the rent and all the late penalties and the attorney's fees and you know if he brings it in i'll leave him in there because the truth is the house needs twenty thousand dollars worth of work so I don't, I'm not real anxious for him to move, but if he does, I'll just rent it out to somebody else on a work for equity because I'm not going to renovate the house. But as long as he's willing to pay that rent and pay those fees and costs, God bless him. Let him stay in the house. So uh, I tell you, well, without that system, this guy would have cost me a fortune by now because if I let him get by and let his excuses go on, 30 days later I still haven't evicted him. It's my own fault. I'm just letting him steal money from me. And I'll tell you, the farther you let him get behind, the less chance that you have of them catching up because it requires more money for them to do so. Very simple system. Five days late, send notice on day six. Don't have the money, send straight to the attorney. Let attorney follow up, forget about it, and they'll either pay or they won't pay. Okay. All right, next question is from Mark Adrian from Pennsylvania. Hey, Mark. He's got another question regarding virtual assistants. Okay. Actually, it's two questions. All right. What do you suggest they say is their opening lines to the seller since it will be obvious that they are not the average owner-occupant buyer calling? Okay, it starts like this. Hello? <laughs> That's the opening line. Hello? <laughs> I say, hello. Hi, is this Debbie? Hi, uh, Deb, uh, Debbie, uh, this is Ron. I'm returning a call about the house. You talked to my assistant yesterday, and I'm following up to get a couple more facts and see if we can move forward. And by the way, that is in my scripts, in my boot camp manual. Okay, I don't know whether you've been there or not, but it's in my boot camp manual, word for word, which is the way I like it, right down to hello. That's the beginning word, uh, but something of that nature. Okay, then he goes on to say, what should the VA say if the seller asks the VA to clarify a question? Say, uh, how much does the VA have to know about the basic none, concepts of none. business? The VA should have a default uh, line that said, listen, I'm just collecting information for my boss. I'll have him call you back if you tell me that your house is for sale. And I get the answers to these simple questions, which are the ones that's right on the property information sheet. Okay. So the VA, you don't want to try to make your VA a real estate agent. You don't want to try to make them answer questions like that. Just give them oh, an easy way out. I don't know the answer, but my call, boss will call you back and give you the answer. Right. Okay. And it does say that on the uh, property information sheet. I yes, think. it does. Okay. It's actually written in there, word for word. Okay. All right. Next from Aaron Drummond, and Aaron is from Orlando. Hey, Aaron. Ron, I have a house under contract with about 45 days left on the option. Okay. Since the option agreement was signed by both sellers, the sellers have filed for divorce. Uh -oh. The husband's attorney is now telling him that nothing can be done with the house until after the divorce. Of course, the attorney mm -hmm. does not know the details of my agreement with the seller. So the question is whether the divorce has any bearing on my option agreement. 
This is a house that's underwater. I had negotiated an axe deal with the seller. I've got multiple viable leads on buyers currently, but the husband, and he is the only seller living in the house, mm-hmm. is not being cooperative in setting up showings because of what his attorney told him. Well, he's trying to find out if his that's that's one of those tough ones. Is valid. Uh, your your agreement is valid, but the problem is, it's not worth trying to enforce it. You can force the husband and wife to lease option the property. They've already done that if they both signed it. But you can't force them to cooperate. You can't force them to do something they don't want to do. So all you can do is sue them. For what? Uh, you know, it ain't worth it. I would simply, um, I would want to write a letter to the husband and the wife to say, listen, I'm willing to move forward. I've got more, uh, tenant buyers right now that I feel are qualified, but it is going to require your cooperation. So. If uh, I'm going to get it, fine. If not, just tell me and I'm going to back out and uh, avoid our agreement. And that's exactly what you should do and move on and go do another one. Ain't no sense in trying to beat our head against the wall, trying to make deals when the other side doesn't really want us to. He said, to make things even more interesting, this is my first deal. Well, welcome <laughs> to your training. <laughs> that's, that's what it's like in the world of business. Things don't go like they're supposed to go. Murphy lives everywhere. Quit crying over spilt milk. Go milk another cow. Aren't you glad you don't have any money invested or your credit line uh, signed up on a loan or you're risking your assets? Do business like I teach you, like you are, and you might learn some lessons, but at least they won't cost you more than some of your time. Incidentally, you won't forget this. When you move forward now, you'll make sure that you have full cooperation from your sellers. And I think you had it here, but I, I'm not sure you could have done anything different, frankly. They got a divorce after you got the contract signed. What are you going to do? Don't worry about it. Move on. I think you did everything you're supposed to do. Okay. All right, All right. Ron. Our last question for this week comes okay. from D. Cody of Massachusetts. Uh, how could we do this without <laughs> D? All right, D. D is back. Okay, and this is regarding Ron's Bible. Ron's Bible. His right. question. Can you Which chapter? Genesis? Exodus? <laughs> can you sell us your gold club? He says, can you sell us your gold club homies? Okay. Your planner. I have That's not been one. able to find anything <laughs> like it. And yes, we I- can. You can order it from my office. Uh, it's $79 and it comes with a CD from uh, me on how to use it and another CD from Dan Kennedy on time management. Just get a hold of our office and, and order it. And if we don't have any in stock, we'll have to order them and get you some. We'll need some for the business management coming up in May anyway. And But, yeah, we can sell it to you. That sounds good. Okay, Ron, that's it for this week. All right, guys. See you next week. Hey, don't forget to register now for the upcoming convention in Vegas. Surely you would not let July 4th go by and miss Vegas, would you? I know my wife will be going there. There's no way I can go to Vegas without her. <laughs> It's against our family policy, at least her family policy. Uh, she's going to stay at Harrah's. We're going to be at the Red Rock, uh, and so be it. She's got this great big old beautiful suite at Harrah's that they give her for free, as long as she keeps sticking money in the machine, you know. I'm not sticking money. The only machine I play in Vegas is the change machine, and I break even every single time. But uh, we're going to have a great time at Red Rock. And by the way, here's something we're doing at this convention that you haven't been told yet. We're going to have a talent show. Yeah, a talent show. Okay. Uh, we're, our, we're, going to have, we're going to have you tell us if you want to get in a talent show. We'll give away a big prize. We'll let the audience. This is the American Idol for real estate investors. What can I say? We're going to, uh, so we're going to let the audience judge you on talent, and, and the winner's going to get something really, really big. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, July 3rd through the 7th, what do you got to do besides go to the convention? Come on, it's July 3rd. It's, it's, a, it's a great time. You've got holiday off. You won't miss much work. And we're going to have a lot of fun out there. Got some great speakers coming up, too. And I'm, I'm actually preparing some special speeches just for this event. You know, I'm teaching most of this thing myself. Uh, between the networking parties and the banquets and the Vegas shows, I'm doing an awful lot. Of, they're working me 12 hours a day out there at this thing. And incidentally, we're giving away a vacation for ho- to Hawaii for two. And don't assume that's one of them crappy vacation certificates. We are literally going to put two people on an airplane and fly them to Hawaii. I hope they I hope, I hope somebody in L.A. wins this thing. It's cheaper on us. <laughs> <laughs> and put them up for a week in a, a nice resort in Hawaii. Or we're looking into making it a cruise for two. So we, we'll let you know pretty soon which one it's going to be. But I'm guessing this is probably a $15,000 vacation that one lucky couple is going to win. 
in addition to the $5,000 cash prize that we're also going to give away and a whole bunch of other cash prizes. Over a hundred thousand dollars worth of cash and prizes like we did in Orlando. So what, you know, where should you be on July 3rd? I know Las Vegas with us at our real estate convention. And don't forget the all day act seminar that Scott and I are going to do on July 3rd. That would be a Wednesday show starts that night when we open the convention. Go get registered. It's a small amount of money. Platinum Pass is only $297 and that covers two people. And we're going to spend more than that to feed you. So get in there. I'll see you next week. Go where, do some deals. And where do they register, Ron? Oh, I don't know. Newagewithron.com. Newagewithron.com. Oh, okay. New <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. I knew it was something like that. Newagewithron.com. See ya. <laughs>